Today we're going to take a look at getting started with RAD Chart View, part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for XAML.NET development. For a brief overview, today we're going to be checking out what's new in RAD Chart View. As many of you probably know, this is the successor to RAD Chart, which has been in the suite since they were first created, so we definitely want to see what makes Chart View new and different, as well as see some of the potential things that Chart View is going to offer us as it moves out of beta and into an official control in the Q1 2012 release. We're also going to take a look at both the RAD Cartesian and RAD Polar charts, since these will both be relatively new terms to anyone that's already familiar with our charting suite. We're going to start off in Visual Studio today, so we'll first go to the Telerik Visual Studio extension, select RAD Controls for Silverlight, and say Create New Telerik Project. This will bring us to a familiar new project window, so we're already on the Telerik menu, we'll want to click on Silverlight, we want to start a C-sharp RAD Controls Silverlight application, we'll call this we're at chart view dot getting started. Click OK. We want to move this back down to Silverlight 4, since that's the version that I'm currently using to record. We want to definitely still have this hosted in a web project, and we'll go with ASP.NET. Now this next window may be a little new to you. This is the Telerik Visual Studio Extensions window, which easily lets you select both the assemblies that you're looking for, as well as what themes you want to include in your project. As we can see, we're working off the RAD Controls for Silverlight 2011 Q3 release. And I will select Chart, and we can see that Controls was already selected for us, so it knows which dependencies we have on these different assemblies. Now I can simply click Finish. Now that our project's all started up, you can see, if you look over in the References, we have Telerik Windows Controls, Windows Controls Chart, as well as Windows Data, so the three assemblies that we need to get started with the brand new RAD Chart View. Next thing we want to do though is get right to the XAML and start working with the RAD chart. Now as I mentioned in the previous slide, we have both RAD Cartesian chart and RAD Polar chart. So if we want to use our IntelliSense, we'll do new RAD Cartesian chart, get this into our XAML, and we can immediately see some results in our design window. So we're currently being told that both horizontal and vertical axis are not set. Important information to know if you are going to be building this out by hand. But rather than doing that, we're going to take advantage of this unique little helper that we have here to choose from the different chart areas that are available. Here we can see in this list we have area, bar, line, scatter, spline, and spline area available to us. So I'm going to go ahead and select a pretty standard bar chart. We'll actually move our designer window over. We can see this is all being stuck in the designer. And we have a few different options for what kind of chart we want to create. In this case, I like the look of the horizontal multiple bar chart. So I'll click that, and the choice will be replaced with existing XAML. That is fine. Click Continue. And now we can see that we actually have a fully functional chart sitting here working in our view. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this a little bit so you can see the full chart in action. So we see here we have multiple data series, we have the X and Y axis, we have strip lines. So all these things you would expect from a charting solution. But now we can go ahead and dive into the XAML a little bit and actually see what was created in order to see, as I said before, what's new with this RAD chart view. First thing you'll notice as I scroll down, we have our RAD Cartesian chart, and this has a Cartesian chart grid. Now the grid is what's going to determine things like strip lines visibility, what brush you want to use for the strip lines, different settings that affect the overall look and feel of the chart. So those are all going to go in the chart grid property. As we move down a little bit further, we can see on line 19, as well as line 22, both the vertical and the horizontal axis are set. The reason that we let you set both vertical and horizontal axis in this manner is that you may want a different type of chart, you may want to be able to switch these out or do different customizations. Well, we make it very, very easy to include exactly what you want in RAD Chart View, meaning we're not going to stick you with the default axis. You have to tell us which axis you want to use in order to make everything work with your chart. Scrolling down a little bit farther, we can see that we have our first bar series. This is going to have combined mode of cluster, so that determines how the different values that were being seen displayed are combining. We can also see that we've gone ahead and modified the point template for the sake of this example. So we have this nice fill color that's going, and we also have two data points showing up. We see something very similar for our bar series 2, where combined mode is still cluster. Our point template is this dark orange that we see represented, and then we can see the categorical data points that we're using to add to this chart view. So I've actually went up and minimized these different things that we had going into our RAD chart. We have a much better view of what exactly we're doing to make a RAD Cartesian chart happen. 
So stepping through Rad Cartesian chart, we have our grid for overall view and settings. We have to set both our vertical and horizontal axis, and then we determine what series want to exist on the charts. So very opt-in, very customizable, and very nice as a successor to the Rad chart that we currently have available. But if you noticed, I mentioned that there's both Rad Cartesian chart and Rad Polar chart. So we're going to go ahead and comment out this entire Rad Cartesian chart. And we'll go back to our friend IntelliSense and go Telerik Rad Polar chart and we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. We can see from our designer view, it's telling us polar axis and angle axis are not set. So you immediately see there's something a little bit different with polar chart. The reason for that, of course, being that we want to enable different scenarios, specifically polar and radar charts. These are something you're not going to find in the pre-existing rad chart for SolarLight WPF, and this is specifically one of the reasons that we want to redo our charting, because it gives us the ability to offer brand new chart types and new features and functionality that we previously just could not include in the older control. I'm going to go ahead and select polar charts for this example, and I can see here we have one that has a nice little design going on. Go to continue, and we can actually see what's happening in the series. Go and close our little Visual Studio Designer helper. Now we can see the visual, so let's go ahead and do the exact same thing and go stepping through this code to see how we got this all set up. First up, we can see our rad polar chart has a polar chart grid. This gives us both grid line visibility and radial line dash array. And we can see this is 5.5. Five. If we went and changed it to 10, 10, we can then see that change reflected on our chart live as we're working with everything. Scrolling down, something you might remember seeing in the designer, we have our radial axis as well as our polar axis. And again, these are live on the chart, so if I wanted to say my major step is instead going to be 45 degrees, we can see that instantly gets reflected in the designer. I'll actually bump this back up to 100% so you can see where that's happening in action. So like I said, maybe I want my major step to be 180 degrees, and then I just have two points. Very easy to use, very intuitive, and very easy to customize as you can see. Stepping down, we can see our polar axis, line stroke, major step, and minimum. In this case, I'm going to go ahead one more time, do some runtime customization. Just make sure it's in the design window, otherwise it doesn't have quite the same effect. And we can see, if we set our major step to 50, we only see three points, 0, 50, and 100. All easily set with these properties. So we can see radial axis is going all the way around. Polar axis is going from the center over to the right. And again, this is going to be your zero degree mark if you're thinking in radial terms. If you want to look down a little bit further, we can now see we also set our polar area series. Here we have a custom point template, which again, very nice color, has a set height and width. And then we have our polar data points all charted out. You can see these all exist in code, and they're all showing off these different points that we have present. Now if I want to, I could very easily go ahead and say to the second point where the angle is 30 and the value is 70, change that to 90, and we can see live updates sitting here. And if I went ahead and decided to run this, we can get to see the same thing live in an actual running Silverlight application. But of course, the best thing is, this runs the same for Silverlight and WPF. So I can do this exact same code, and it'll work exactly the same in a WPF application. And now we can see that exact same chart I was talking about and playing with the properties of is now displaying live in our application. You can see Internet Explorer definitely is Silverlight. So again, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Getting Started with Rad Chart View video for Telerik Rad Controls for Silverlight and WPF. Stay tuned as this is the first video in a series meant to get you acquainted with this brand new chart and take advantage of all its new capabilities. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.